Well here we are, we're at uh, Hamad International Airport and today we're going to be trying out business class Q Suite style with Qatar Airways. Thank you, thanks very much. Good morning to you, welcome on board. Thank you, Mr. Torres. Well, here we are on board the Qatar Airways new Q Suite. Uh, this is exciting for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, it's on an A350-1000, which is the extended version of the A350-900. Uh, it's a brand new aircraft. It's absolutely wonderful. It's a new generation. Um, it's one of the reasons it's so quiet um, on board, um, and it's a pleasure to be on board. Um, the Qatar Airways is getting deliveries of Dash 900s and Dash 1000s. There isn't much to choose between them, but certainly the ones that have this new product on board, the Q Suite, uh, are definitely worth searching out if you're lucky enough to fly in business class. The tough problem that Qatar Airways has, and it's a great problem to have, is it's already got a fantastic business class. It's the one that uh, we've previously reviewed on the B787 and the A350-900. What they're doing now is putting this new Q suite on board. There have been a few teething problems with doing so, as there are with all new business class seats. It's something that other airlines are having the same problem with, United and Polaris, for instance, which is their, the name for their business class. Um, but the rollout is continuing, and we're lucky enough today to be on the new Q Suite. So what's different about Q Suite? Well, the first thing is you have forward and backward facing seats, kind of like British Airways Club World, except very, very different. To begin with, you have a one-to-one -one configuration across the aircraft, so it's very spacious. Um, you also have the ability to have either a window seat, if you have the choice, but also these centre seats, which have dividers between them, but they also have the ability for that divider to go down and uh, centre doors to slide open so that you have four seats, so like a family of four or four business colleagues can have a meeting together. I think the, the ability for the seats to have the central divider down is a, is a great thing. I wonder how many people will actually do this for. I mean, I've put them down now so that you can see what it's like. So this is how they unlock the door. So that's now, it's got a special device. I imagine when they do the new version of this door, this will be a lot easier. And then these are the doors being opened. You obviously have to have the permission of the other passengers to do this. So these are obviously locked in position, so it has to be unlocked. And then those central dividers go back. And then, if you're very lucky, you have four seats like this. Okay, so here it is with the central divider down. There's this control here, you see that little thing there? So I'm just gonna press that. Hopefully, you'll still be able to hear me. Watch how quickly. Yeah, that's what I'm see. So, if your partner displeases you, that's what you go for. As you see the um, side seat lifts up and you've got storage underneath where the bottle of water and the headphones live and you can also put some other things in there. You can see there's um, plenty of power, uh, that triangular thing just to the right is for headphones, then you've got USB and the power socket and then next to that the touch screen handset which can be pushed out. Ladies and gentlemen, educate a child. This is like that. It's an initiative supported by Qatar Airways. And and this is what those backward seats look like uh, when they've got the divider halfway down. It goes a lot higher than that, so if you didn't know the person, it wouldn't be a disaster. And those seats are E and F, whereas these ones are D and G, the forward-facing ones. And you can see they're, um, they've got that, the console table in the middle. Very different um, the seats because obviously those forward-facing ones have got that pop-ups, um, the sort of pop-up and pop-down armrest with storage underneath and that console table. While these ones that go into the double bed, the console table is by the side there, so that the seats are close together and you can do that double bed effect.
So I'm just uh, videoing the seats going down fully flat. So when the central divider is down, then you put that kind of leather thing in between the two. And as you can see, it creates a double bed. When you're choosing um, the right seat, bear in mind that if you actually want to have it as a double bed, which is not made up here, but at least you can see what the bed would be like if you put bedding on it, you do need um, rear-facing centre seats. The forward-facing ones obviously have this table in between. Excuse the mess, because it's got all my stuff on it. So those are the forward-facing ones, and you can't make those into a double bed. I mean, clearly you can have a chat to your neighbour. So if you were maybe with a work colleague, those forward-facing ones will be good, because you can put the divider down, have a chat, and then put the divider up when you want to sleep or have some privacy. But these backward-facing seats are the ones you'd want if you wanted to make them into a double bed. Got a sinking feeling. There's a lot of room for um, legs. Then it gets a bit cramped at the end. Well, it's um, very long. There's plenty of room, particularly um, if you put down the armrest here, which creates more room for your shoulders. Yeah, and there's plenty of room for your feet as well, so I think I'll be having an afternoon sleep. So you can see here I've um, put down the central reservation between these two seats, which are 4D and 4G, they're forward-facing ones. If I just go around this side, you can see how the configuration fits together. So you've got 4D and 4G, they're forward-facing, and then you've got two backward-facing ones in row three. The irony is that there are actually quite a few groups on board uh, with either young children or teenagers, and yet they've chosen window seats, assuming that those are the best seats. And so as a result, they're all in the individual seats along the side, when actually that's kind of what these middle seats were designed for, family groups. Maybe they know, or maybe it's their choice. So the cabin starts in row one with these two centre seats, one E and one F. And then it's quite a complicated layout, simply because you've got both forward and backward facing. So you have pairs of seats in the middle. You have one F, one E and one F here, which is at the front of the cabin. Those are backward facing seats. And then if we move forward, you can see here, you've got another pair of seats, but these are 2D and 2G. So if you do the, um, it's not arithmetic, but to do with the letters, you'll see that to actually get four together, you'd probably have to take advice or look at a seat map um, because the letters don't correspond directly to facing one another. The reason for that is because they're slightly staggered. And as you can see, the feet of uh, one passenger, let's take the example here of one E, then go, and I hope this isn't making you ill swinging the camera around, go under the table there. And because of that, E then becomes D here in 2D. But you have these pairs forward and backward facing right the way down the middle. And obviously that's uh, very convenient if you want to put down that central uh, divider because they're, I'm in 3E backward facing, but you can see they're 3F. And then you've also got a central, those central um, parts, slider parts, that you can make it into a nice four that you've probably seen on the publicity material. But then there's also the window seats. Now the window seats are great, but again, just like actually on BA, now on BA they're all backward facing on the windows, but um, here you've got forward and backward facing for the same reason for the staggering. So you have one A here, but then going down the same side, you'll have two B. If I had a choice, I'd probably choose the A one, simply because you're by the window and you've got a bit more privacy. I mean, there's a sliding door, but there's a bit more privacy between you and the aisle. So it goes 1A, 2B, 3A. So it's worthwhile looking at a seat plan if you do get the uh, choice. Depends how empty the flight is and also depends if you're in business class in the first place. But as you can see, there's a fair amount of privacy, but anyone walking by, even with the, the doors shut, can look over. So it's not, you know, like a, a first-class experience, but it, um, it has a first-class layout, certainly in terms of um, 
these pairs. I should also mention that um, in this cabin there are nine rows along the sides and ten rows of pairs and then there's a second smaller cabin at the back and that has um, basically a quad in the middle so four seats and then four seats at the sides as well so there's eight seats there in a two rows of one, two, one. And this is the main cabin just looking backwards while in flight. We're lucky today because the flight isn't too full. This is um, QR001 back to London and it's um, a lunchtime flight so you, know, you, you end up flying all day for, for that reason. It's not hugely popular but um, you see here, let me just go up so you can see more of what um, the cabin's like. I have checked, there's no one directly behind me. And then if we go out into the corridor... So, you know, it's the kind of thing that you'd expect um, in first class, but obviously that's the whole thing. It's about, um, certainly when you speak to Mr. Al-Bakar, Akbar Al-Bakar, who's the chief executive, the chief of Qatar Airways, uh, when he, you ask him about first class, they only have first class on the A380. So when you have a longer plane like this one, the A350-1000, there would have been an opportunity to put first class on board. In fact, there's only business and economy. You say to him, why haven't you got first? Because it's really good on them. Um, the A380 and he says our business class is like first. Of course if you ask him why he hasn't got premium economy he'll say because our economy is like premium economy. From one point of view that's what you'd expect from um, an airline CEO but you do have to say well there is no other business class like this one. Um, it's uh, it's very spacious but he actually has done the sums and with this forward and backward facing he's actually losing no room over the existing uh, business class that he has on the B787 and the um, the A350-900 with the old old seat on, I say old, but two or three years. So it does make sense um, from a real estate point of view how it fits on the aircraft. Um, the, the experience of being on it is absolutely wonderful, I have to say. The service, as you'd expect, is fantastic. It's good on the 787 and, and the other aircraft as well. Um, but, uh, you know, warm welcome. Um, if you've got any tier status with One World, that's recognised and you're, you know, mentioned when they um, they greet you. And uh, they've already taken the orders. We've only been flying for half an hour. They've already taken the food orders and the drink orders. Um, so there's no hanging around, even though it's a day flight. Um, I think often on day flights, uh, there's that feeling of, oh, we can take our time because, you know, people want to um, want to have the whole experience. But it was immediately explained you can have dine on demand which is great because obviously you can dine when you want to do but if you want to dine when they're doing the main service then that's fine too and that's what I've gone for so that I can show you it. So just to show we're listening to the feedback that we get on videos on a previous review which was Singapore Airlines first class which you can also find on the YouTube channel um, we did kind of omit to show much of the food, so there's a real food focus on this one. On a day flight like this, I think the food and drink does play a big part in the business class experience, and as you'd expect, they've done a, a great job um, for this day flight. As an a la carte and dine on demand menu, um, the soup of the day, which I've just been told is white onion, and then you've got appetizers, um, two choices, signature Arabic meze, which is hummus, tabbouleh, baba ganoush, served with Arabic bread, which is what I've gone for, and then poached prawns on vegetable linguine with seared lime and scallions, which I didn't go for. Uh, the mains are chicken macluba, uh, herb crusted loin of lamb or vegetable jalfrezi, and I've gone for the vegetable jalfrezi because after only spending 24 hours in Doha, I've eaten an awful lot of meat. And there's a selection of artisan breads, you get the choice of uh, olive oil or um, butter with that and then the desserts are banoffee pudding, fresh berries with almond syrup or gourmet ice cream selection. Not bad. The wine list. Um, it's the same wine actually as on the route out from Gatwick and we're flying back to Heathrow but it's it's a great um, list uh, because um, it's actually uh, Ramadan at the moment they're not bringing out the wines other than in a particular glass which is obviously uh, fine and culturally sensitive but the champagnes just to show you here as opposed to the bottles you've got Pomeray is the standard champagne you've got Drapier, Brut Rosé uh, the Burgundy is an Albert Bichot, Brie Frise and a Sauvignon Blanc New World Villa Maria um, 
the discovery, which is what they call like the one, I guess, that you discover. It's the one I've tried. Actually, I've tried it on the way out and the way back, and I don't really like it, I've discovered. But anyway, it's a Chenin Blanc from South Africa, Cape Town. And I've just come back from Cape Town. I love their wines normally. Uh, a Bordeaux, so we're on to the reds. Chateau Lynch Moussas, Grand Cru Classe Pouillac, 2012. Shiraz, Killerman's Run, that's New World, Clare Valley, Australia. And the discovery is a Primitivo 2012 from Italy. Might try that one actually, Terre del Greco. Then you've also got a dessert wine, um, which is Alvier Pedro Jimenez Solera, 1927. And then a port, Grand Cruz Porto, 1992. And then you've got spirits and cocktails and, you know, some great brands in there. So for occupying the time, if you haven't got work to do, um, there's plenty, you could just eat and drink the whole seven hours or if it's a further trip, which the A350-1000 obviously will go on, you could just eat and drink right your way through the trip completely. What's also great for this uh, dining experience is that you've got so much room. So I was working just before the food came along. I could put my laptop to one side, which is where it is just there. I've got this side thing for all my you know, books and computer, um, uh, mobile phone and notebook. And then I've also got this giant table which is very firm I mean I was just working on it before it comes out on a slider here and then folds out and then they, they put the stuff on it but it's you know you've got a real sense of space even with this shut you don't need to have to worry about being claustrophobic because you've got this you know big area and then what you can't see on the camera but you've actually got space underneath so if you want to stretch your legs out you've got plenty of room to do that as well and I think for you. great thank you Try some drinks? Uh, yeah, Killerman's Run. Sure, certainly. Yeah. Thank you. Arabic meze. Arabic bread. Non Arabic bread. Fantastic candle effect. Butter plate for olive oil and proper salt and pepper. Can't beat it. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's... I've only ever seen it on um, fellow One World carrier British Airways. It's a kind of three-in-one bread. I think it's done by um, one of the caterers. So you've got three different types of bread, but um, it's all in one lump. Or one, what do you call it, loaf sure what the point is why you couldn't just have three different ones but it's a neat little touch and then you have olive oil or butter to go with it I like this little touch look looks like there is actually a candle on the um, table that cool a nice little glass with a choice of um, sparkling water or um, still water and this is the vegetable jalfrezi This is the in-flight entertainment system. Just gone through to movies. You can see Hollywood, Arabic, Bollywood coming soon. Do Hollywood. And then you can just scroll through and see all of the different films. These are just the Hollywood ones. Then, what else have we got? Let's have a look at general entertainment. TV. I had a choice. Well, uh, we're about um, an hour away from landing in uh, Heathrow. It's been a very comfortable flight. Um, had a decent sleep, and I've just woken up a steak sandwich and um, a cup of tea. So it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, Going back to which are the best seats, it's a really difficult one. Um, the window seats, you can be both forward and backward facing. Um, if you're forward facing, you're quite close to the aisle, um, but then you've got the door, so I don't think that's a deal breaker. So for an individual traveler, I think those are probably best. Um, for two people, um, if you're with just a work colleague or something, forward facing will be good. If you're with a partner, like a wife, um, I think backward facing are the ones because those are the ones that are the only seats um, that go into those double beds uh, because of the staggered nature of the seating. So you want a, a backward facing um, centre seat, so those would be E and F. 
Uh, the ones I'm in here, which are forward-facing, are D, and then on this side it is G. So it's quite complicated with the different sets of seating, but I think when you um, have a look at the video you can work it out. Um, so with forward and backward facing, close to the aisle, not close to the aisle, and whether you can put the seats together as a, a double bed, there's certainly um, a true choice. Uh, you just want to make sure that when you book, uh, you make that choice so that you don't end up in the, um, the wrong seat. The other thing that um, you can do is, if there are, if you're in a four, or as they call it, a quad, you can request for these um, centre forward and aft doors to be open so that you can maintain eye contact with your children or your loved one. Um, during takeoff and landing, which is a, a really useful thing and, and I think unique. Well, we're coming to the end of the flight now. I hope you found this one useful. Um, any comments, please leave them on the YouTube channel and we'll see you again for the next flight check. Many thanks. Mm -hmm.